Let's give it up to the youth. Blow to the squad if we win or we lose. It is in our veins that orange and the green when it through and through. Cause you know we want it. You squad versus ours, now they don't really want it. Our petty grids deep with pros and abundance. Get ready for the storm cause the hurricane's coming. Let's give it up to the youth. Blow to the squad if we win or we lose. It is in our veins that orange and the green when it through and through. Cause you know we want it. Your squad versus ours, now they don't really want it. Our petty grids deep with pros and abundance. Get ready for the storm cause the hurricane's coming. What's good, Kings Nation? All right, it's been a while since I dropped a video for my Miami Hurricanes. Um, just been doing some other stuff, rebranding and all of that good stuff. But never fear, your boy Live Wire is here. Ooh, like that. Um, so I'm going to go over some couple of details, you know, um, discuss the Marcus um, Van Dyke and some um, potential stuff that happened around the spring game over the weekend. Um, so... Stay right here. Let's get right to it. All right. So apparently Miami defensive back analyst, DeMarcus Van Dyke, is leaving the University of Miami for FIU. Now, we know DeMarcus Van Dyke um, played a, a pivotal role for our defensive backs, you know, like um, Stevenson that, that's going to that's in the, um, getting in the draft right now for the NFL. Um, he definitely has um, a lot, a pretty good experience under um, Mario. But some figured that the um, Marcus was going to play a more pivotal role for the defense, especially with um, the um, we losing major defensive people on there, and then you know Jason Taylor getting promoted. And stuff like that. So hopefully now that um, he gets the opportunity and be able to come back in a um, a higher percent, uh, higher capacity, or end up in the NFL as a um, an NFL defensive back coach. Who knows? Depends on how his resume shapes up in FIU. Now, according to Inside the U, the Marcus Van Dyke is leaving the University of Miami staff to take on on field coaching job near FIU. Now, inside the inside the, you did say that um, they learned the following um, do the following spring, doing the following at the spring game Friday night. Van Dyke would be the FIU cornerbacks coach that was vacant by Corey Bell, who moved who moved on to FAU um, to be their Nichols coach. Now, um, Van Dyke, he's young. He's thirty four. Um, he's spent. Like I say, he spent the 2021 season as an on-field staffer for Miami under Manny Diaz' final season. But he also um, um, relieved, um, you know, before Manny was relieved of his duties. Then, you know, when Mario came along, Mario, you know, um, Rick, Lashley, um, Rick Lashley left. Um, Mario kept Van Dyke on the staff, but moved him back into the on-field role where he worked closely with the cornerbacks, you know, like Jamal Jamal Adai, um, who played a key role on um, Miami's um, Miami's um, defensive unit. But nevertheless, um, Van Dyke was a factor in some of the notable additions Miami had, you know, especially with Cam Kitchens. Um, Dan Army Brown, Wesley Blassigan, and Jaden Harris. Now, especially that's, you know, mostly around the recruiting era. Um, Van Dyke also, he's, um, it's crazy because DeMarcus Van Dyke and Tyler Van Dyke, <laughs> the Van Dyke brothers. <laughs> oh, man, what would you do for a Van Dyke bar? <laughs> uh, I like that. But anyway, Van Dyke, you know, he's a Miami native. You know, he would have the opportunity in his own room, you know, show what he could do, show what he had learned for um, under Mario Crystal Ball and stuff like that. And maybe if Mario gets a position and he does well down there, maybe bring him back and put him in a real coach's role. Who knows? Um, so nevertheless, you know, we losing one of our own. You know, I don't think um, I don't think it's going to be like a significant. Um, Bad thing. I mean, I think that, you know, with everything that's going on right now, 
So we are um, <clears throat> we are moving on pretty much. Now, let's talk a little bit about the spring game. Um, there were some good things stand out, especially from the spring game. Um, 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 from I'm taking pretty much notes from the um, um, 24-7 sports and the Miami Herald. So now I didn't really catch most of some of the other spring game, but, you know, nevertheless, I wanted to catch this one because it was so later down because pretty much if you think about it, they probably have a few more spring games to go before, you know, the NFL draft. Then you have about like, Right now we 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 in April we got May June July August so we got about three and a half months before the season get ready to roll back in but nevertheless um we all know that last year was a very disappointing year for the Miami Hurricanes you know we didn't make a bowl um it, it was treacherous you know Tyler Van Dyke being hurt um, um Jacory Brown you know was was a freshman he was struggle you know um. Um, Jake Garcia left, you know, um, we got guys going to the NFL and then we had to recruit hard. We had to recruit hard to replace, um, guys. We wanted to be tough in the trenches. We want to be tough, um, on offense and defense. We wanted to have speed, you know, you know, um, more of our, uh, a, a, a spread type offense. So that's what they have worked so hard for over the last few months with the recruiting and now you getting to see some of this pays, you know, starting to see some of this flourish. Now, granted, it don't come, all of it don't come into play until the season start until you play your first game. This way you will know if Miami has taken a step forward, but just to see some of the things in spring game, you know, it's, 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 I won't get too excited about spring games, but just like to see, I like to see some flashes or something. Now, 24-7, like I said, 24-7 Sports reported um, in the spring game, um, on, my, um, um, on the game, you know, there was a 70-yard play, a lot of action, you know, where everything went the way it was supposed to be. Um, Ruben Bain for the defense, had, I think he had, what, three tackles or three sacks, something like that. So there was a lot to take from this. You know what I'm saying? Ray Ray Joseph had a 79 bomb for um, from Emory Williams, which was good to see. I mean, I think Ray Ray Joseph going to be, he's going to be one of them deep threats that you're going to have to pay attention to. Um... um you know, Tyler Van Dyke, he looked as sharp. You know, he did have a chance to make a couple of other plays um, with some guys opportunity had give some guys opportunity to make plays. Uh, he also had a couple that got away from him, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like I said, it's spring it's spring training. It's not really the spring, it's the spring game. It's not really, you know, you want to see what the defense and the offense could do because you're playing against each other. So yeah, quite naturally, you're going to be able to, um, you're going to be able to, um, uh, you know what each other do. But the thing about it is, like I say, you're gonna have to put this down. You're gonna have to put this down. Um, but I mean, for what I've seen, some of the highlights, because I, I think some of the highlights they've been showing mostly was Emory Williams to um, Ray Ray Joseph. Um, I think that's some of the stuff that they've been looking at and everything like that. So, um, but Mario did say he wished he had a couple more weeks of practice um, because we need to. Um, so he wants to still iron out some things, you know, probably he sees some things that still could be worked on or whatever the case might be. He said the team had a lot of young guys in a lot of critical spots and they are getting better. Um, it's like, man, one more week, we you wish you had one more. And that's where you could get this, you know, sometimes it takes that, you know, to have that one more week just to iron out all the things that you've probably seen in this game right here. And then you probably say, okay, now these guys are ready to go. But who knows? Um, 
Former UN tight end Khalil Bentley, Brantley, who did not participate in spring ball officially into the transfer portal on Saturday. So they, you know, we lose, we we've been pretty much losing some, but hey, the portal is a cleaning house for players who declare they intend to transfer and anything like that. So Miami had twenty, Miami did have twenty players into the transfer portal last time it opened and had eighty had added eight transfers. This time around, it should be quieter. They, I mean, though, <clears throat> they, will eat, uh, they will see soon enough. The Canes are seeking to add depth at the wide receiver core, which they still going to need to have depth there, as well as defensive, um, defensive line, tackle, and defensive backs. They got to add depth. They lost a lot, you know, from that, from them areas anyway. So you're going to have to add that to keep that rotation going because you don't want the guys to get tired out of burnout, especially if you're playing a, a top team and you don't have the proper rotation and these guys get tired and then all of a sudden big plays will start coming from another team, then you get select on the field. You don't want that. To, you don't want to repeat that same situation from last year. You want to continue to, you know, build on. So I think this year should be a little bit different for these guys. Who knows? Chris Boyd did say that they will explore adding a quarterback which they did add a quarterback, um, a quarterback did sign on and everything like that. Um, and because they only have three that's on scholarship as well as a running back, five on scholarship. It's definitely important, Van Dyke said of the portal, you see, you see your strength and your weaknesses in the spring game and try to fill those spots when needed. Not even if it's a weak, if it's a weak uh, weakness, but the depth, but we need depth as um, depth also. Getting some guys in here will help us, and that's the key thing. Getting more guys in there. Um, Christopher did note that players arrange practice sessions among themselves, added by um, leaders such as Cam um, Tyler Van Dyke and Cameron Kitchens. Um, I think Cameron Kitchens is going to have a, a break. Uh, I think Cameron Kitchens is going to have one of those. Breakout years. I mean, because I, I think he might be going. This might be his last year with us. He probably be going to the NFL. I'm not sure yet. I mean, don't quote me on it. Um, but he could, like I said, him and Tyler Van Dyke should have like a phenomenal year. Especially Tyler Van Dyke gets to be in an offense that is going to have him so much comfortable. And that's where he he dropped off so um, dramatically last year when. You try to um, Josh Gaddis was trying to implement a pro style offense by running it, and then your offensive line was decimated, was bad, and Tyler Van Dyke ended up getting hurt. He was supposed to, he was supposed to had that Heisman breakout year. Now this year he's going to be even going up against Drake May for North Carolina and Caleb Williams, and there's probably be some other sleepers out there too. But Tyler Van Dyke, if he wants to put his name in that Heisman hat. And show that he could be a um, he could get drafted as a top the top quarterback in the nation next year. Then Miami gonna have to put this offense in high gear. He's gonna have to have astounding numbers because you gotta think you got Caleb Williams that's they, they already say looking like the the number one draft pick. Then you you got Drake May over there also. So you want you definitely want to play better than Drake May. That's in your own in your own um, ACC. Um, Tyler Van Dyke did also say that him and his teammates will be throwing, catching, and in the weight room, getting um, getting conditioned stronger and faster, just have a great summer with each other, really connecting. And that's a very, very important because Tyler Van Dyke needs to have that continuity with these guys, these new guys also, because he got, you know, he got some of that with um, Jacoby George. Um... um you got Jaleel Skinner there. Um, you got Xavier Strepo there. So he definitely need that. Now, I think uh, Jaleel Skinner is probably going to take Will Mallory's spot in that tight end's role. So he definitely going to have to have that chemistry because Will Mallory and Tyler Van Dyke had chemistry. You know what I'm saying? It didn't matter where he was. He was able to find Will Mallory on the field. Um, he's also say, you know, to make sure he's, you know, Cam Kitchen say that he want to make sure that his body is healthy and he's mentally and he's good and stuff like that. So, um, 
the other, you know, you got the majority of the remaining freshmen will be arriving in time for spring and summer semester and everything like that. So they gonna have a lot of guys that's gonna be able, that's gonna be coming in there and stuff like that. So um, I, did, I definitely want to get into some other, some other notes too, where um, 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 top um, 24-7 wide receiver um, Chance Robinson did commit to the University of Miami. So that's a good thing right there. Um, you want to, you definitely want to make sure you, you, you start, you still keep getting your guys that's from your area. You want to be able to, it's going to be very important because you know, you still got people down there still trying to grab some of Miami talent and stuff like that. Um, I do want to go over some of Tyler Van Dyke's numbers from the spring game real, real quick. Um, if I could get into it, but Oh, excuse me. But nevertheless, um, I guess I can't get in there. Uh, but all in all, Miami is definitely is Miami is definitely looking good. Um, the, they show overall progress in the spring game. That's a major plus, you know, where they was, you know, because even though they look like they did some things last year, but at the end of the day, it didn't translate it because the offense was bad. The the plays was bad. I mean, you got you got to think everything from the defense to the offense was bad. And you you knew Mario was going to not stand for this going to his second year. You just knew that. You you, you I mean, because if things things were so bad that you you didn't even know Tyler Van Dyke was gonna stay. You know, we thought Jake was gonna stay, but. You know, now, you know, Jake wanted to get his opportunity and you, you got to wish the young man all the success in the, all the success in the world because he needs that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but until then, man, you know, that's that's what we got right now. So, like I said, congratulations to Demarcus Van Dyke for, you know, moving on, getting what he needed to do for himself. Miami spring game looks pretty promising. You know, hopefully. We add some more depth. We got get, going to a lot of guys. Everybody's taking this a little bit ser serious. I think they're going to come out a little bit more aggressive like they than they did last year. I think Miami knows right now they have little room for error coming into this 2023 20, season. They have, I mean, Mario knows that he's getting paid a lot of money and he has to put the product on the field and he has to get guys to buy in. And that's the main thing. And I think now with a new defensive coordinator and a new offensive coordinator, things should be a little bit smoother. We get to see it. So hopefully in the time, you know, the season kick off around August. And, my, you know, I think Miami played Miami, Ohio first. You know, I don't want to – me personally, I don't want to see a, a 60 or 70 point game because that's not going to tell me anything. I want to see when we play – you know, you at least you score like 40 something points and then you let some of the younger players play and then you use that time to not show your so too much of your hand. You know what I'm saying? So we'll get this. You'll see. But anyway, to continue to tune in. Um, season two of Kings on the Daily will be starting May 1st. So therefore, be checking my live stream. I will be coming with more content on the Kings. A little bit updates here and there. I think that show was scheduled on Tuesdays last year. Now I'm going to move it um, to Wednesdays um, and everything like that. So we get to chop it up a little bit with some canes on the daily. But until then, guys, this is your boy Live Wire Sports Entertainment, and I'm out. Go you.